If you have ever watched a video about speedrunning on YouTube, be it about Super Mario 64, Minecraft, or even Portal 2, you will without a doubt be familiar with the following concept. Techniques and strategies are often unknown for a long time, before someone discovers them either by accident, after some deep and proper thought, or through a flash of unrivaled genius. Sometimes these strategies are adopted immediately, but more often than not, they enjoy a substantial period of obscurity, during which the techniques are only known, performed and are appreciated by just a few seasoned players, before finally gaining the attention of the larger crowd, if this ever happens at all. Today I will not be talking about the speedrunning technique, rather a Portal 2 puzzle mechanic, whose story shows eerie similarities with what I just described. It too was basically mostly overlooked for many years, but has in recent times become more and more standard among the veteran puzzle solvers in the Portal 2 community. I think it's high time that more people become aware of it. So without further ado, let's talk about Portal 2's Ghost Cube. If you are totally unfamiliar with Portal 2 Workshop puzzles, it might be worth first watching my previous Portal 2 video. But to summarize the video in a borderline irresponsibly brief fashion, it explains how crucial it is to understand the unparalleled power of respawning your cubes. Since the game is played from the first person perspective, being able to make stuff happen at a distance is very powerful. Respawning cubes allows the player to do just that. And as such, this technique has long been widely exploited in the Portal 2 puzzle community. The Ghost Cube technique is an extension of this idea, and it is best explained by first taking a closer look at what happens precisely when a cube is destroyed after its dropper is instructed to spawn a new cube. As you can see, the destroyed cube does not vanish immediately, for just a few seconds, while it completely disintegrates and before it vanishes into thin air, the cube turns into this alien looking object. This is the ghost cube. They cannot be picked up and they exist only briefly. How in the world could these things ever be useful in solving a puzzle? Let us take a look at what ghost cubes can do and what they can't. If you put a cube on a button and respawn it, you can see that the ghost cube no longer presses the button. The button gently pushes the ghost cube up, making it float away slowly, and then it disappears forever. What happens if the cube is blocking a laser? Well, apparently the ghost cube still has enough structural integrity to keep blocking this laser, until it's truly gone. This is an interesting fact that can already be exploited in non-trivial ways. Take a look at this map for example, called Repeated Reflections by Evolol. At some point in the solution, we are required to get through this fizzler without losing our portals. This fizzler is turned off by blocking the laser here, but we cannot afford leaving the queue behind because we want to use the lift. It seems impossible, but fortunately the respawn button is right here. Indeed, we respawn the cube and we start walking towards the fizzler. The ghost cube gives us enough time to make it to the other side, and on top of that, we can also make use of the lift. An outstanding move. But there are more properties of the ghost cube that we can still explore. We can try stacking two cubes on top of each other. Will the top cube fall through the ghost cube when the bottom cube is destroyed? No, the ghost cube will keep supporting the top cube until it has completely vanished. One last question one might ask is, what if this stack of cubes is precisely on top of a button? Will the weight of the top cube leave the button pressed, even though the ghost cube normally drifts up? No, the two forces balance each other out. The ghost cube is lifted off the button, but apart from that it is still kept in place. And then finally the top cube will fall back onto the button, pressing it once again. It is this interaction that turns out to have the most far-reaching logical implications. Namely, focusing on the activation state of the button, we see that during one of these respawn sequences, the button is initially activated and then for a brief period deactivated and then activated again. An immediately disappearing cube would have made this period much too short to do anything meaningful. 
but the presence of the ghost cube extends this to a few seconds. And sometimes, these few seconds are all the player needs to do some pretty interesting things. It took the community quite some time to realize the full potential of this setup. Stacking cubes had been done before though, like in this map by the legendary creator Mevius from 2014. Here, a laser catcher controls a moving panel, and the puzzle requires us to ride it all the way and back again. And the way to achieve this is to stack the cubes like so. If we then respawn the laser cube, the laser is blocked by the falling cube, moving the panel. Then, respawning the laser cube will reactivate the laser catcher, moving the panel again. However, I do not consider this to be a proper ghost cube move, as the timed aspect is not exploited here. The solution would have worked just as well if the respawned laser cube disappeared immediately. This added subtlety is what makes the ghost cube move stand out from other ideas that just involve stacking cubes. To illustrate the variety of ways in which the real ghost cube technique can be used in puzzles, I will discuss a number of great maps from the hands of highly respected authors. For anyone interested in trying to solve them for themselves before I will give away the solutions, I have left links to the maps in order of their appearance in the description below. As a first example, let us look at Self Dissipation by Fumbly Bumbly. Incredibly enough, in this map, the player does not even have a portal gun, and it still manages to pose an interesting challenge. We must reach the exit by crossing a light bridge, but the same button that opens the exit door disables this light bridge. How can we ever make this work? We're given two cubes, of which the yellow one spawns right on top of this crucial button. Another button controls this spawning, and the respawn button for the blue cube is right in front of the chasm we are meant to cross. The key idea is to use the ghost cube technique as described before. We stack the cubes like this. If we now respawn the blue cube, after a few seconds the yellow cube will land on the button again, and as such respawn itself. It will then drop onto the button that opens the exit. This whole sequence takes enough time for us to make it across the gap, before the light bridge deactivates. A supreme example of the ghost cube technique. The second example is a droid from the Terminated. Here we must stack two cubes on top of the button that controls the position of the auto portal. One position gives us a laser out of our blue portal and the other gives us a light bridge. To get to the exit we must cross this gap and we can only do this with the light bridge. This crucial surface that also faces a laser catcher that respawns a cube would allow us to do so. However, we also need to activate this laser receiver to open the exit door. It seems like we need both the laser and the light bridge at the same time. Again, the ghost cube comes to the rescue. Namely, if we have stacked our cubes and move our portal to this surface, the laser will respawn the cube. This creates a ghost cube and as such the position of the auto portal changes, giving us a light bridge for just enough time to safely cross the gap. And then the laser returns again and we have solved the puzzle. It is with its interactions with the funnel that the ghost cube techniques truly shines and where it knows the greatest variety of uses. Consider for example Perplex 2 intro by Camerson1313 which was released in 2014 and what makes it, to my knowledge, one of the first maps to ever exploit the Ghost Cube mechanic. Remember that Portal 2 released in 2011, so this map came a full three years after that. In this puzzle, we may collect two cubes, and the only way to reach the exit is to use the Faith Plate to launch ourselves into the funnel and ride it to our destination. However, the funnel itself is blocking our path. How can we evade it? We stack two cubes on top of the button that activates the funnel. While the ghost cube prevents the button from being pressed, we evade the funnel, but it reactivates right in time to catch us again, completing the map. But funnels can not only disable, they can also reverse polarity. To conclude the examples, let us explore this tiny map that I made specifically for this video. It uses ideas that I borrowed from Verticality by Tio, Contrapositive by Nerdling Nation, and the ironically titled Simple Puzzle Very Easy by Steam Stream. I've linked all these maps, as well as this example map, in the description. In this map, 
we must disable the funnel to get to the other side and spawn the second cube. However, we need a funnel to catch this cube before it falls into the goo. How can we solve this apparent paradox? Indeed, we respawn the cube before going to the other side. The ghost cube will give us enough time to reach it before the funnel turns on again. After obtaining this companion cube, we do a bit of shuffling to end up with both cubes near the funnel. Now we must think about how we will reach the exit area. Due to its orientation, we cannot shoot this portal surface here, so the only way to get to the exit area would be to use the blue funnel out of this portal surface and then use the orange funnel to pull us over there. But how do we reverse the funnel polarity from here? Exactly, we respawn the cube first and the ghost cube allows us just enough time to perfectly get us through the portal. We may get both cubes in the exit area. And to finish the map, we must ride the piston up. But how would we get the cube onto the button from all the way to the piston itself? Precisely, one more ghost cube. We stack the cubes, respawn the first cube and start walking to the piston. It comes down for just long enough to allow us to casually step onto it and we complete the puzzle. So yeah, the ghost cube technique knows many applications and allows for highly elegant solutions and logical paths. It can be frustrating to play a map that requires it if you have never seen it before, as it definitely requires some deeper understanding of the precise properties of Portal 2's cubes to even consider it to be within the realm of possibilities. But if you've made it to this point in the video, you're now, as they say, in the know. Being aware of this technique is crucial to anyone looking to take solving Portal 2 community puzzles somewhat seriously, as in recent days the ghost cube technique has become more and more prevalent in proper community puzzles. It is my hope that this video will prove to be useful at some point in your puzzle solving career, and also if you're looking to design some maps of your own. Before I end the video I have one brief announcement. For years my channel has been mainly a place where I would upload my music, but recently I have decided to change its course, as you can see. So that's why I created a second channel where I can continue to share my music and where I will continue to upload unscripted gameplay videos. Be it Portal 2, be it a different game, just anything goes. Please consider checking it out, thank you all very much. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below, I really enjoy reading all of your comments. Thank you very much for watching, I appreciate your support a lot. So yeah, see you in the next video, bye!